Melissa Ray, and I'm the teen librarian at the Levi Library. I'm also the one who writes the book reviews at the Bookmark, which is our monthly newsletter by librarians, for librarians, about librarians, doing what librarians do best. And yes, I'm aware that I might have to come up with a new slogan for that. So for my first review, uh, I will be talking about uh, this book, I, Claudia, by Mary McCoy, for two reasons. One, it's because I just wanted to start out with something that I've already viewed, reviewed for the bookmark, and two, it's because I wanted to talk about the events that I wasn't able to cover in my bookmark review. And before I do that, I do want to let you guys know that I, Claudia is basically a gender flipped version of Robert Gray's I, Claudius, which tells the story of the Roman Emperor Claudius. Prior to his coronation, Claudius was a historian whose limp, stammer, and other nervous tics made him others think he was, wasn't a threat, and it made his family want to hide him from the public because they were literally embarrassed by his parents. It doesn't help, it didn't really help that his work, which was a little bit too truthful and too critical of the Emperor Augustus, it really didn't earn him any brownie points for the public. Here in Mary McCoy's version, Claudia McCarthy is, like her, like her counterpart, she's physically handicapped, she also has a stammer, and she's also regarded as nobody important, except to her older sister, Maisie. And she even goes out of her way to make sure that everybody assumes this way, all for a book. Her freshman year at the, at the Imperial Day Academy begins simply as an observer during the reign of the Honor Council President Augustus Dean with Maisie as his vice president. His obsessive need for order and maintaining his legacy has not made him really unpopular among his fellow students. The only thing is they don't say anything about it because they're too scared of being expelled. This defining moment comes when he and fellow council member Ty Berman crash an off-campus party being thrown by Soren Beekman, the school's unofficial laid-back drug dealer. Here, Augustus' idealism is shown in all its fine chilling wonder as he states to Claudia that if the honor code is if the honor code is supposed to mean anything, it has to be in effect at all times. Which roughly translates to we have to turn our school and its community into a puritanical, totalitarian, semi-dystopia that will make every last dictator in history weep with envy. Proceed. Now, towards the end of her freshman year, Claudia is goaded by Olivia Drusus, her little school nemesis, and Maisie's best friend to run for the Senate. She accepts because she feels like she needs to protect Maisie from corruption, but unfortunately, that corruption comes in the form of an exchange program in Rome for Maisie, courtesy of Livia. The reign of Ty begins with Claudia and fellow sophomore Hector Estrella as the new sophomore senators. This is where we get to see the corruption of the school's political system in full, full force. Not just, not just as an observer, but as somebody actually within the system. We also get to see what Livia is really capable of. While they're planning the homecoming dance, Claudia and Hector discover that the Senate president and a few of his friends, they were planning a secret, more elaborate party for themselves using embezzled money they had been raising for the homecoming. Basically, they were using embezzled money for for the homecoming dance. And while Ty is president of the Honor Council, it's basically clear that he has neither the competence nor the personality traits required to be a good or semi-decent leader. Enter his VP, Olivia, who basically runs the Honor Council, all while pretending to be subservient to Ty. After Claudia approaches Olivia with the news of the Senate embezzlement, she is summoned to her first Honor Council hearing where she is asked by Olivia if she would be able to run the Senate if the current president were to be impeached. Claudia, Claudia declines, not wanting to owe Olivia anything else, but accepts Hector's offer of vice president when he is declared Senate president instead. Throughout the year, Hector and Claudia manage to make the Senate more than just a glorified party planning community. I'm sorry, part glorified party planning committee, and they do so by establishing events that actually help their fellow students. In fact, their first act is to completely do away with homecoming and establish Honor Week, 
which allows students to do char charitable things for their school and their community, and they get recognized for it. But when re-election time draws near, it's Livia who finds herself at an impasse when Kyle Hurt runs against her. Unfortunately, her campaign comes to an abrupt end when her darkest secret is revealed. Namely, she started a rumor that a teacher at the middle school that she and Claudia attended was having an affair with another girl Olivia disliked, even going as far as to forge poems and love letters in his writing. And Cal, unfortunately, is elected the Honor Council President by default. Junior year begins with the reign of Cal, who is, to be blunt, exactly what Caligula would be like if he were a modern-day rich white boy living in SoCal. His inflated ego and ginormous sense of self-entitlement were always there for readers to see and no doubt cringe at, but his ascension of power basically just ramps them both up to 11. What he does during his reign entails taking any and every suggestion that Claudia and Eric put out and making it his own. In fact, he actually does take control of their honor week and includes a homecoming dance where, surprise, surprise, he crowns himself king and makes Hector's girlfriend, Esme, his queen. In a surprising twist, the school's beloved turtles are also killed at this dance, which basically gives more Cal more power, influence, and influence over his peers, while making the Senate look like careless, unconcerned morons. Unsurprisingly, Cal becomes more unhinged as the year rolls on, people become more fearful of their futures, and the once revered honor council begins to fracture and become a twisted mockery of what it used to be. But when Cal is given his just desserts at the end, it's Claudia who finds him, broken, bloodied, and alone, and because she was able to save his life in time, she is elected by her peers as, as the new honor council president. The story started and ended with these words spoken by an unnamed fortune teller. You're going to destroy them all. You're going to leave them reeling, their ambitions unrealized, their dearest hopes and wishes thwarted. And when all of them have fallen away, you alone will be left standing with the kind of power that people would lie and cheat and steal for. The kind of power that everyone wants. Everyone except you. I bring that quote up because I think it accurately summarizes the reigns of the most famous political leaders in history. Some of them, they may have jumped at the call because they felt like they had no other choice but to accept and found themselves completely unprepared for what lay before them. But they did manage to do as much as they could with the odds against them, and they became well-known historical figures as a result, whether they wanted to or not. I want to end this review by saying that I, Claudia is a novel that shows that for those who are determined, goal-oriented, and well aware of their shortcomings, obstacles are merely stepping stones for them. I liked how Claudia made no excuses about the things she did, and she even stood by them, no matter how shrewd or shady they may have seemed. And for all her shrewdness and her cynicism, she did want to see some improvement done in a majorly corrupt, biased system, and she did what she could as best as she could. Uh, I just want to thank you for taking the time out to listen to me review this book. If you're interested, by all means, go to your local library and check it out. And if you're a major, uh, and if you're a huge fan of fan of Roman Roman history, you might want to check out *I Claudius* by Robert Graves. Thank you very much for watching, and. Uh, I hope you have a good rest of the day.